Nigel, this is the first time these two cars have been together. You're the only driver to simultaneously hold the Formula One World Championship and the IndyCar Championship. What's it like to see that car again? I've just pinched myself, if you hadn't noticed. It's, um, it's um, pretty unreal and pretty scary at the same time because just looking at this beast to my left, the, uh, the Lola IndyCar, I haven't seen it probably since almost won the championship. And um, I remember doing the special lap at Michigan 500 and I did all four corners flat and we averaged, uh, I think it was 233.7, two miles an hour without a lift. You've got to be nuts to do that. I mean, it's, um, there's no safety barriers. Something went wrong. We knew that, you know, you'd probably be dead. And so, yeah, I got out of the car and I can remember doing this to my body thinking, I don't want to do that again. So, um, but then... I have to say it was very kind to me too because I won the 500 race at the first attempt. So uh, special memories, but pretty scary memories too. And can I just touch on that aspect of things? Because you, you made an impact straight away, pole position and a win on your first street course, but then you went to your first oval Phoenix in the second race. And that was painful. Uh, just talk us through that. Yeah, I mean, it's, they do crazy things in America. It's a tri-oval. We were doing, I think, 18.8 .8 seconds uh, for just over a mile and a bit. And so averaging you know, close to 200 miles an hour. And for whatever reason, the car dug in on turn one, one and two and put me backwards in the wall. Uh, I think the impact, I was a little bit unlucky with the angle it went in because it punched a hole in the... Um, no, no one's ever done it since or done it before. So we punched a hole in a three foot thick uh, concrete wall. The shock wave came through the car and hit me in the back and um, split my back open really bad. And obviously it was good in some ways because it switched my lights out for some time. I don't remember anything. And I think it was 10 days later with 148 stitches in my back, I was pulling 5G trying to qualify at Indianapolis. What stage in that race, let's touch on the Indy 500 now. Do you feel that you could win that race? Because Mario was very strong. Emerson Fittipaldi was in there. Ari Larendijk as well. But you I were think, right at the front. Yeah, I think the, the first Indy 500 I went to, as you know, I was leading the race with only a few laps to go. And to everyone's surprise, not least of mine, they put a full course yellow out at the end. There was no reason to put a full course yellow because I was five seconds in the lead and there was no incident on the circuit. The only small incident was I think it was Lynn St. James went to the wrong pit in the pits. So they decided to put a full course yellow. And um, I was still on, um, shall we say, some sort of medication for pain and everything. And um, obviously on the restart, never done a restart at Michigan Five uh, at the Indianapolis. And I got jumped pretty unprofessionally by Harry Leindyke and uh, Emerson Fittipaldi. And obviously there's only two laps left, so yeah, we fought hard to try and overtake them again, but we ended up coming third instead of winning the race. And Interesting, because I had a chat with Emerson Fittipaldi and Mario last year. Mm. Emo said after that final pit stop sequence, he sat behind you and he couldn't believe how quick you were. Yeah. He just watched and yeah. he thought, I'm not going to pass this drive. Yeah. No, we were in good shape until they put the full course yellow. I think what was funny was I was pushing it really hard with the last but one lap to try and overtake again. And they hit the wall coming out of turn two. And obviously then they put a full course yellow. And Jim McGee, who was a wonderful team manager, got on the radio and said, Nigel, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I think so. And he said, no, he said, you're okay. And I said, yeah, I'm fine. He said, you hit the wall. I said, yeah, it was a bit scary. <laughs> yeah. And who do you think is going to win this weekend? One of the Penske cars. Uh, I'd like to think one of the McLaren cars, but uh, Penske seems to have the whole front row wrapped up. Power, I think, is very strong. I mean, he qualified very, very well, didn't he? I think he was 334, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but anything can happen at Indy. Yeah. Um, great race, great cars. They've, they've done such a great marketing thing since um, uh, Roger Penske got the series, since he brought Indianapolis. Uh, all compliments to Penske Racing and, and Roger himself. Um, superlative uh, uh, everything. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's just uh, an amazing gentleman. Nigel, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.